This is Fox 23 News at 10. Coverage and convenience. 10 minutes of non-stop news starts now. It was, oh it was like a tornado. It was actually like a tornado. It Thousands without power as a storm wreaks havoc across the capital region this evening. Trees and wires crashing down. One firefighter shocked by live electrical wires. What a night it's been. Good evening to you. I'm John Gray. And I'm Ann Hughes. First on Fox, it's been a very busy night out there. Those early evening storms did do a lot of damage. We're going to begin our coverage tonight in the Albany area where lots of trees came down and there were several flash floods. Lightning may have sparked a fire in Albany where a firefighter was shocked. Fox 23's Jeff Saperstone is live in Albany tonight with a wrap-up on the night. Jeff? And while this is a scene repeated throughout the region tonight, this is a tree snapped in half on some live power lines. They're actually waiting to get rid of these live power lines before they can do anything with this tree. We are here at the corner of uh, Manning and Washington in Albany. It's a scene that's been repeated, as I said, throughout the region tonight, all because of these violent storms. Mother Nature's fury in Albany tonight. Take a look at these two 100-plus-year-old trees. Side by side, they're uprooted during the height of the storm, crashing down on top of Holly Reese's Summit Avenue home. And I had my hand on the window frame, and it just shook. The house just went like that, and I heard a, a light thump. Reese then smelled smoke, the twin trees taking out some live power lines, too. Luckily, there was no fire. It's a good, solid old house, so I don't think the damage is going to be as bad as it could have been. But the damage was far worse a few streets down on Kyler Avenue. Lightning or live power lines may have sparked this blaze. To make matters worse, the whole house became electrified. A firefighter was shocked in the process and taken to Albany Med. Firefighters couldn't put out the fire until National Grid could turn off the power. Right now we're in a, in a tough situation because it's been pre-burning for so long. It's balloon frame construction, so it's pretty well advanced. While fierce lightning continued elsewhere, flash flooding was a real problem. Several cars attempted to drive through a waterlogged Western Avenue in front of Stuyvesant Plaza. Some became stuck. The same thing happened on Central Avenue in Albany. Where you could drive in the capital city, there were obstacles, trees and limbs down everywhere. This one went right through the back window of a car on Partridge Street. You don't see things like this, but in the movies. <laughs> And back here live, you can see this is one of several National Grid trucks that are out there tonight hoping to fix the power that has uh, been cut to a lot of areas tonight. They will be working overtime. A lot of the uh, crews will be working overtime. and we're, uh, We still have word that they are uh, still at the scene of that Kyler Avenue fire that we showed you in the piece there. That was just a real stubborn one, And It's amazing to see the variety of damage done in just a yeah. short amount of time, Jeff. Yeah, there was. I mean, just driving around from block to block, you get all sorts of damage, but there was damage. That was the consistent thing. Right. Well, we're glad you st stayed safe during it all. Jeff Saperstone live in Albany tonight. Thank you. We had our crews out all over the capital region tonight. Uh, let's go over to uh, Schenectady County first, where a massive tree came down at the intersection of Oakwood Avenue and Van Cortlandt Street. And here at the corner of Crane Street and 10th, a tree came down on a house going right through the rooftop. The noise woke up a resident who lives on the first floor. And I heard a big noise. The whole house started to shake, and I look out the window, and I see now the tree coming down, so I just screamed and grabbed my kids and ran out the house. Anthony Resto tells us that his friend lives upstairs, and was her bedroom that was actually hit by the tree. She had just left the house 20 minutes before. It's quite a mess in Del Mar right now, too. The rain came down fast at the four corners. The road experienced some flooding. A section of Kenwood Avenue had to be shut down because a tree came down across it. A tree also fell on a garage and two cars on Fernbank Road. Luckily, no one was hurt. Many homes and businesses in the area also lost power. Now, speaking of power outages, thousands of people in the capital region are in the dark at this hour. Uh, most of them are in Albany County. Let's run down the list. Power knocked out for more than 28,000 customers there. Again, that's Albany County. More than 6,200 are in the dark in Schenectady County, just over 700 in Rensselaer County and Warren counties. There are scattered outages in other parts of the area tonight, and in most places, electricity is expected to be restored sometime overnight. And we can keep our fingers mm -hmm. crossed and really hope that the worst is mm -hmm. over. And you mentioned earlier to Jeff, it seemed like it hit in about a 20-minute span, but uh. did so much damage. Let's check in with our meteorologist, <coughs> Crystal Verry. Is it we done for the night now, Chris? 
The worst of it is done. We have the secondary effects of the storms right now. We have urban and small stream advisories for Herkimer and Montgomery County. Be careful near some low-lying roadways and small streams. As we go over to our Doppler radar, you can see that the activity is much lessened compared to where we were a little while ago. But we still have some storms going up, say, from Rutland down through to the east of Glens Falls. As we go back to the west, though, this is where we're going to start having areas of concern. A minor thunderstorm just to the south of Cobleskill and John. You were asking, are we done for the evening? Well, the worst of it is, but as we start going out towards the west around Ithaca, there are still a couple of storms out there that will continue to come towards us. I'll continue to track them and give you the rest of the forecast when we come back in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Chris. We do have other news to tell you about tonight. The battle to save Bellevue pushes on tonight. Albany County politicians showing their support for the Women's Hospital. This evening, tonight, the Albany County legislators passed a resolution in support of keeping the hospital open. Bellevue has been recommended to be closed as part of the state's Burger Commission report. While the hospital is in Schenectady County, one legislator says closing this a closing will affect women in Albany County as well. We have over 20,000 Albany County women over the past five years used their services at Bellevue. So Bellevue is not just a Schenectady County facility, a hospital. It's a regional hospital. It's a hospital that Albany County residents, Albany County women use. So it's important they, they provide an important vital services to the women of Albany County. The Bellevue bill, which would remove the hospital from the Burger Commission closure list, was passed by the Senate, but was never taken up by the State Assembly. Another round of the war of words between Governor Spitzer and Senate Majority Leader Joe Bruno today. However, this time the two appear ready to end the personal attacks and find a middle ground to work together. Fox 23's Walt McClure has that story. Oh my goodness, this is a heavy book. Governor Spitzer chose reading to kids at the Albany Early Learning Center's Head Start and Child Care program for his first public appearance here in over a week, saying their future should be foremost in lawmakers' minds now. I'm encouraging the legislature in the weeks, months ahead to join us in that endeavor as we strive to make our streets safer, a better education, a more affordable environment. This was the governor's first public response since news reports that Senate Majority Leader Joe Bruno allegedly misused state aircraft and reports that Spitzer aides ordered state police surveillance of Bruno. Mr. Spitzer says his office did nothing wrong, there is nothing personal here, and they should just put this behind them. This is a matter of substance, not personality. I like Joe. We can disagree on substance, but let's do it in a civil way. Let us have our public discussions and private discussions in a way that elevates rather than diminishes. The Unity House steps up and relates and gives them an opportunity to start life uh, over again. In Troy, to present $45,000 to Unity House to give domestic violence victims legal help, Senator Bruno, too, seemed weary of the ongoing saga. It's, it's sad and it's unfortunate, and we really have to get on with our lives. Again, I have no personal animosity with this governor. I was looking forward to partnering with him. The senator again maintained his use of state aircraft on trips mixing business and politics was no different than other state leaders, including the governor. You know, and I know, that what happened was totally legal, totally appropriate, very common to what the governor does, what I do, and what others like me do that have resources available to them. The governor also denied making derogatory comments about Senator Bruno to other Republican senators. Bruno says he does not doubt the comments were made, but still hopes to work productively with the governor and Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver. At the Capitol, Walt McClure, Fox 23 News. A member of a colony family found guilty in an insurance scam has now learned his fate. Joseph Hotailing was sentenced today in Albany County Court to up to four years in prison. He, along with several other family members, were accused of staging car accidents in order to collect insurance money. Joseph Hotailing and his wife, Renee, were only the only two found guilty and for falsifying business records. His attorney claims this trial was full of errors and that they will appeal. This was an unfair trial. This was an unfair process. This was our criminal justice system at its worst. Joseph Hotailing was hospitalized just after the verdict came down in his trial. Authorities say he swallowed antifreeze in the county courthouse just moments earlier. He has since recovered. His wife will be sentenced next month. Autopsies are planned for tomorrow on the two victims of a plane crash in Berkshire County. The FAA says the plane was heading from Maine to Columbia County Airport, which is in Hudson, when it went down. Plane crashed in Tyringham, Massachusetts this morning, killing the pilot and the passenger. 
Both men are from Maine. Now, the National Weather Service says that there were storms in the area when this happened, but it's really not known if weather had anything to do with the crash. The investigation with the FAA now underway. A search for a missing camper in Vermont is being called operation tonight. The camper was last seen in Green Mountain Forest near Stratton, Vermont on Saturday night. That man, 29-year-old Edgar Gonzalez, is from Cambridge, Massachusetts. We're told he got separated from some friends during a hike. Search crews are focusing on a pond in the area after other campers say they heard several shouts for help and splashing water. Well, customer service, you know, you call the line, they're supposed to help you solve your problems. But it turns out asking for help too often could cost you your cell phone service. The carrier that's pulling the plug on needy customers coming up. Also, a young man goes door to door making an emotional plea for donations. Turns out it's a scam. We'll tell you what to watch for. And wildfires tearing through the western part of the country, one in Utah, unfortunately goes in the record books now. We'll tell you why next. You're watching Fox 23 News at 10 with John Gray, Ann Hughes, Chief Meteorologist Steve Teeling, and Sports with Rich Becker. This Fox 23 News segment is brought to you by Residential Specialists. You're watching Fox 23 News at 10, the Capital Region's most watched newscast on any station at any time. Wildfires continue to burn hundreds of thousands of acres in the western part of the country. As Fox's Alicia Acuna tells us now in our coverage of national news, these fires have destroyed dozens of homes and claimed several lives. A Utah wildfire is blamed for at least two deaths. Hundreds of firefighters are battling the flames. It's the biggest fire in state history, about a quarter the size of Rhode Island. It's uh, pretty overwhelming for a little while. Uh, but you take it off in chunks like you do every fire. And Utah is not alone. Western wildfires are burning their way across 13 states, with thunderstorms igniting at least 900 new fires. Rain and cooler weather is helping firefighters battle a wildfire in Hot Springs, North Dakota. The fire was sparked by lightning Saturday evening and spread quickly through the area. One homeowner was killed and two firefighters injured battling the blaze. Fire officials say 27 houses and about 50 other buildings were destroyed. South Dakota Highway 71, which runs through the fire area, is closed. It was moving uh, at high rates of spread, and, and uh, it was one of those that really got up and, and got with it. Firefighters say the weather helped them control about 20% of the blaze. It's encouraging to see this kind of weather. By no means, though, have we uh, stopped our suppression activities because we have a lot of fire still. And in Arizona, high-tech telescopes that peer deep into space are in danger from flames burning closer by the hour. In Washington state, more than 200 homes are in danger. And with the hot and dry conditions, it could be three more days before the fire is fully contained. In Kenosh, Utah, Alicia Acuna, Fox News. Well, the manhunt continues in New York City for the suspects who shot two police officers there. One of them remains in critical condition at this hour. The officers were shot about 2.30 after pulling over a stolen SUV. Now, security cameras were in the area, and they caught the shooting and the three suspects on tape. We're being told by police the video is too grainy, though, to give a detailed description. The stolen vehicle was ditched a few blocks away from this. Three guns also found at the scene. Hiring a contractor sounds easy enough. You just check out their references and make sure they're licensed. What if they lie to you, though? Happens all the time, and in our Consumer Alert tonight, we're going to show you how to protect yourself. And this fruit tastes good, and now there's word it could protect you from skin cancer. Our health alert is next. Did you miss a story or just want to see it again? The most local news video is always available. Video on demand, only on fox23news.com. This weather segment is brought to you by The Tornado. This Fox 23 news segment is brought to you by Hannaford. Discover the wonders of shopping Hannaford. You've probably experienced the sting of sunburn. Sunburn can lead to cancer, but in tonight's Health Alert Medical Breakthroughs, we're learning about a tasty fruit that could prevent the cancer from developing. Little Lauren is following in her dad's footsteps. Which way are you aiming? That way. Good. Even though it's back to the basics. 
Okay. David Dick wants to make sure his daughter learns one important lesson much sooner than he did. Use sunscreen if you're going to go out in the sun. David had two cancerous lesions removed, a result, he says, of too much sun and too little protection. Now, protection may come from, of all things, black raspberries. And it's like a little lotion that we apply after the animals are exposed to the light. When black raspberry extract, which is loaded with antioxidants, is rubbed on the skin, it may stop skin from swelling, from sunburn, and it actually stops tumors from forming in mice. Things that you wouldn't normally expect black raspberries and skin cancer who would have ever thought, but it, it really opens people's minds to alternatives. New research also shows men should be particularly careful out in the sun. Men actually seem to be uh, more sensitive to sunlight, but in a different way than women. Research in male mice revealed they have much lower cancer-preventing antioxidants in their skin. The male mice actually developed tumors about two weeks earlier. They developed more tumors over time. The tumors were larger, and they also were more advanced. Researchers believe this study will translate from mice to men. Just watch the ball now. Now, David knows how important it is to protect you. yourself. She's covered with 64 plus right now, uh, and uh, I've got it all over me. One lesson that will hopefully last a lifetime. Now, researchers at Ohio State believe almost any type of berry will have the same effect, and the extract is clear, so it won't stain your clothes or your skin. That's tonight's Health Alert. John? All right, Ann. Well, Bart, Homer, and Marge want you to know time is running out if you live in the real-life Springfield and you want the Simpsons movie to come to your hometown. We'll show you how the voting's going for the big premiere for the historic event. And what a day for the weather. Temperatures in the 90s, then the rain, even severe storms. Tomorrow, looks like we're going to do it all over again. Weather where you live is next.